Okay, so we should be live with audio, and um, so I just wanted to take a minute to introduce myself. I'm Colin McKinney. I've been a professor at Wabash for oh nine and a half years or so. Um, I'm currently streaming from my parents' house in Texas, uh, so one of the benefits of this um, the, our semester getting done so early, we finished classes right before Thanksgiving and finals and stuff, is I have a very, very long winter break, so I'm camping out with the parents. Um, yeah, so they live in the Dallas area. Anybody in the in the group, I know I saw a few people on the roster that are from Texas. Anybody? Anybody from Texas? No? Okay. All right, well, let's, um, let's go ahead and get to it. So, uh, what I thought I would start with, actually, is just to ask you guys, how many of you have played Kerbal Space Program or maybe another game like Simple Rockets or Simper Planes or um... I've played a little bit of Kerbal. Okay. So what uh I've what a all bit of Kerbal. Yeah. Okay. What uh so and Rye Bread, uh... what's your name? Although I may just call you Rye, how about that? Oh, sorry, my name is Ryan Rukaska. Ryan, okay, so oh, sorry, the Rye Bread Ryan actually Rukaska. does kind of make Ryan. sense. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I forgot to change my name before joining. That's okay. Um, yeah, sorry, I forgot to change my name before joining. That's okay. Um, so, anyway. Um, yeah, sorry, I forgot to change my name before That's okay. Um, sorry. So let's um, uh, let's actually so start. Anyway. Isaac, I'm gonna mute you. Uh, yeah, uh, okay, so let's sort of start with um, something from. Uh, let me switch the the device over. Okay, so you guys should be able to see my desktop. And uh, this happened yesterday, so uh, sort of perfect, um, or sorry, two days ago. It was yesterday, yesterday. So this is SpaceX. They were doing a test um, also here in Texas at their Boca Chica um, facility of Starship, which is this massive rocket. Um, hang on one second. Okay, sorry, there was some stuff on uh, Zoom. They're trying to get the last few people uh, to the correct locations. Okay, so, so I'm just going to play a little bit of this, and hopefully the audio is not too loud. Two minutes, ten, if it is, eight, just let me know. Seven, I'm trying to get the six, audio levels. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay, so this is the Falcon 9 Starship. Falcon 9 Starship, and what you're seeing right now is they're doing a hop test, uh, essentially just launching it to an altitude of, I think, 50 kilometers or so, um, and then uh, they're going to do basically a landing maneuver and then uh, land it back at uh, a pad that's near the launch site. Um, 
what you're seeing on the right is so sort of a couple camera views the the one on the bottom right is kind of neat because uh, it shows you the um, the exhaust of the rockets and so there are three rocket engines here uh, the engines that they're using for this particular uh, thing are interesting because the fuel is methane um, liquid methane and the oxidizer is liquid oxygen most uh, commercial rockets including the Falcon 9 uh, actually use RP-1 kerosene as the fuel and one of the reasons that SpaceX decided to use methane as the fuel for this particular uh, rocket um, is because there's uh, there's a chemical process called the Sabatier process where you can make um, you could actually make the stuff uh, on Mars. Uh, so the uh, whereas kerosene you need oil fields and there's not a whole lot of those on Mars. So so they built it uh, to use methane. Uh, and as you can see, they disable one of the engines at one point. Um, as the thing burns fuel, it of course gets lighter, so you don't need as much thrust. Um, and then what they're going to do, I'm going to flash forward a little bit here, is... Um, they eventually turn off, but uh, only one engine and then they're going to cut that engine right here in a second so they cut the engine and then the entire spacecraft basically goes into this freefall configuration Uh, and sort of glides, if you will, like this until uh, it gets to the landing phase. So at this point it's just falling ballistically and so we'll just kind of watch. So what's going to happen uh, just before landing is it's going to kick on the engines and then flip back upright and uh, try to land um, we'll see how successful they are Okay, so in about 30 seconds or so, they'll start the landing burn. One thing I don't didn't like about this particular stream is it doesn't say what the altitude of the rocket is. It doesn't give us any information. It's just pictures, but that's okay. All right, so as you can see, we're getting quite close to the ground. Look at the top right, and... light two of the engines and then they gimbal them to quickly flip around the rocket and whoops so we get a nice uh, explosion although in rocket science this is not called a crash it's called a rapid unplanned disassembly so basically what happened um, let me go back a little bit just before the explosion what happened is there was a little bit too low pressure in one of the fuel tanks and so the third engine wasn't correctly getting all of uh, the necessary fuel and hence didn't ignite properly um, the other thing that you'll kind of see is you see those two light and then you're going to see a bunch of green stuff as the third engine is attempting to light. So that green stuff um, 
is a particular chemical that they use to basically ignite the engines, right? So what happens with an engine is you're squirting uh, the liquid uh, methane and liquid oxygen into the combustion chamber, but unless there's already something unless it's already burning it doesn't just magically catch on fire or at least those chemicals don't there are some rocket fuels that would just sort of magically uh, catch on fire so they have to use a startup liquid basically kind of like uh, lighter fluid um, and that's what that green stuff uh, uh, was okay so basically what we want to do is look at how to program uh, this so I'm gonna open up and I forgot to launch it already I'm gonna go ahead and get Kerbal Space Program launched and while it's doing that it'll take a couple minutes to get going uh, while it's doing that we're gonna talk about well, the only programming only language um, incredible work team nice work all right, so let's go back to here. So yeah, we got a nice explosion. Explosions are always fun. Um, so while KSP is loading, let me just make sure it's uh, going here. Um, we'll look at the programming language that I'm gonna use for this. And uh, please don't crash on me. It crashed on me. Um, it crashed on me last night, which was really annoying. All right, let's try it again. So the programming language we're gonna use for this is called KOS, um, which stands for Kerbal Operating System. And uh, it defines a language called KerboScript that, there we go, uh, defines a language called KerboScript that uh, will allow us to program our rockets. So um, we'll have to have a, um, we'll have to have a computer core on the rocket that will feed instructions to by means of this program. So I'll tab out of that. And then let's go to KOS. And here's the website that's got all the documentation. So um, the programming language is um, kind of a little bit like Python in some degree. It also reminds me a little bit of BASIC, um, if any of you guys have used those languages before. Um, and um, so what we're basically going to do is, once KSP loads, um, I'll show you uh, kind of a sample piece of code here. So let me just open this up. Okay, so here's one of the pieces of code that we're going to use today. Um, and let me actually open up one under there. All right, here we go. So this script basically does the automated launching. Uh, and so yesterday we did a series of these Scarlet Honor sessions, uh, and I did one on uh, autopilot for launch. And today we're going to talk about sort of an autopilot for landing. So I've got an autopilot for launch script. And then when the two stages of our rocket separate, the bottom stage is going to use, OK, and we're finally loaded. Of course, it doesn't help when you have 10,000 mods.
All right, so let's kind of look at the rocket that I built. And I modeled this sort of in spirit on the SpaceX Falcon 9. Uh, it's called the Falcon 9 because the first stage has nine engines, one in the center and then eight kind of around the outside. Um, and so this rocket has, I called it the Falcon 7, so there's a rule in Kerbal Space Program land that everything has to start with a K, um, whatever. Uh, so it has seven engines, six around the outside, and one in the center. And the way that I did this is the seven, or sorry, the six that are around the outside are, um, if you're familiar with KSP, uh, these are reliant liquid fuel engines, and then the one at the middle is a swivel engine. So the difference between them is the ones around the outside are slightly more powerful and slightly more efficient, not by much, um, and the one in the middle is uh, able to gimbal. So when I had the video of the Starship thing, running, you probably saw that the engines were able to swivel in uh, 360 degrees, and by doing so, they could direct the thrust um, and allow the rocket basically to steer itself. So my central engine has the capability to do that so that we could steer our rocket uh, using uh, directing the thrust of the engine off a little bit. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and launch, and I'm going to run the auto launch part, and then I'll fly manually the second stage, or first stage. Um, and I'll kind of show you what we're after here. Okay, so uh, the way you launch into orbit, right, is it's not so much about going up as it is going sideways really, really fast. So if I go kind of into a map view here, we can see the trajectory we're flying along is this uh, red curve. There's actually a blue curve there too, which you'll see in a minute. And what we want to do is get into a trajectory that's like one of these white lines. So here I have another copy of this rocket that I launched previously and you'll notice that its velocity is basically 2100 meters per second and right now we are going 250, uh, well really 350. Um, so we've got to speed up a lot we also need to get out of the atmosphere. And so the majority of the energy uh, that it takes to do this is in the first stage, just to get up out of the atmosphere. And what you're gonna see here in a minute is that when the, the amount of liquid fuel uh, on this stage gets less than a thousand, so here in just a few seconds, the engines are going to turn off. And then I'll take over flying manually. Okay, so the second stage will light. And it's programmed to go on into orbit. So I'm going to switch over to the first stage. And what I'm going to do is basically make the rocket face west. Okay, now if I go into the map view, if we don't do anything, <coughs> basically we will land 
at this red crosshair when it's at the end of the trajectory. So we'll fall to the end of this curve and where we'll be on the surface of the planet when that happens is here because of course the planet's rotating. What I want is for this point to actually be back near the space center. So I'm going to burn the engines in order to get the landing point over by the space center. And then I'm going to lock to retrograde. So basically locking to retrograde means that the rocket is going to be facing away from its direction of travel rather than forwards into its direction of travel. <clears throat> and as I'm going down, retrograde is the direction, um, it's uh, retrograde is the direction opposite of where you're going. So uh, we're facing backwards basically. And what you're going to notice is we're at you know, pretty high up, 40,000 meters, and our velocity is increasing. I'm going to turn off three of the engines. Actually, you know what? I'll turn it back on for now. So, SpaceX, uh, they don't use all of the engines for the landing. Um, so, here's sort of the problem we have. As I'm falling, notice that I'm speeding up. Okay, and that makes sense. I'm in free fall. But you'll notice that in a little bit, as we fall deeper into the atmosphere, the air gets thicker, and the air resistance will actually start to slow us down right there. Okay, so now we start slowing down. So I need to hit the engines, but when do I need to hit the engines? If I hit it too soon, I might run out of fuel, right? So if I hit it now, I'm going to slow down. Okay, but you'll notice I'm going to slow down too much, and I'm going to burn fuel in the process, and so I want to burn just right so that, oops, I ran out of fuel, and we get a rapidly unplanned, rapid unplanned disassembly. Oops. Okay. So, basically, the problem is physics, right? All right. So, let me revert to launch, and let's try this again. All right. So, does it kind of make sense what the problem is? We need to figure out when do we need to start the burn so that we slow down and hit zero basically the instant that we hit the ground, so that we stop just as we touch the ground. That's the issue. Um, okay, so what actually what I'm going to do here is I'm going to load a quick save, and uh, this way we don't have to launch again and go through all of that. Okay, so I've already got the rocket basically in the free fall part. I've done the boost back to change the uh, orientation, and then I just need to uh, basically calculate where the burn needs to take place. Okay, so for this, let me switch over to um, the code for this. Um, oops. So, this process of basically waiting until the last possible minute to burn uh, and then touching the surface exactly at speed zero is unfortunately called a suicide burn. Because if you're a tenth of a second too late, well, 
you're going to smack into the ground and that'll be the end of it. Okay, so what I basically had to do is do a simple physics calculation. Um, and the crude version of this is basically, so how many of you guys are in calculus, um, a calculus class this semester? Anybody? Bueller? Uh, I am. Okay, so am. basically what I did was I computed um, if I were at some unknown altitude, okay, and I was going some unknown velocity downwards. I am. Then how fast would I have to decelerate in order to go be going speed zero at the time I hit the ground. So uh, what I had to compute then is, well, how fast can I slow down? And that depends on how much thrust is available for my engines and also the mass of the ship, right? So the acceleration is, uh, as you guys know, F equals MA. Uh, so acceleration is force divided by mass. Um, now one of the things that's going to complicate this, as we'll see, is that the force and the mass are not actually constant. Um, the reason for that is that the engines behave slightly differently at sea level versus in vacuum. Um, and the reason for that is because, well, air is thick, right? And when there is no air, the engine performs slightly differently than when it's in the atmosphere. The other problem is that the ship's mass um, changes. As we burn fuel, that's no longer part of the ship, and so our mass gets lower. So this estimate is essentially pretending that the thrust is constant and the mass is constant. Now that's not quite true, so this actually would have us come to a stop above the ground and not at the ground. Okay, so what I did is basically this computes, all right, given how fast we're going, given how big we are, and given how much thrust we have available, uh, how, what height do I need to be at to start the burn? And if the height that I'm currently at is less than or equal to that number, then we'd better start the burn. If it's greater than, then we can just wait, okay? So let's go back to the game and kind of see this in, um, um, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to do two things. Okay. So you have to... Um, yeah, okay. So this is my suicide burn routine. All right, so we'll resume the flight. Okay, now what the thing is displaying is basically how high above the ground do we need to be to start the burn, um, and it's taking into account our current velocity, our current mass, and the thrust available from the engines, and when our actual altitude hits this number, then the burn will start. So you can see it's about 2,000 or so, and right there it goes. Okay, so, <laughs> whoops, basically what it was trying to do was, um, you'll notice that it started the burn and then it turned off real quick, um, and essentially what I haven't added to this program is how to 
basically take into account that the mass is changing. And so what I did was, let's go into the code here. What I did was, okay, so if we need to start the burn, we start the burn. And then once we get 1,500 meters above the ground, then we're going to, um, what I did was I changed the throttle control to be dependent on the difference between this calculated value and our actual value. And uh, the default throttle, if it's fully on, is one. And so if I subtract from that, then I'm going to be slowing down the throttle. Uh, then what I did was I said, OK, if we're, um, we could actually try Uh, try this. So our landing would have been fine except we had a little bit of horizontal motion. Okay, so when we're 250 uh, meters up, we'll lock the steering so that we're pointing straight up and down. Uh, when we get within 100 meters and the gear's not already down, we need to toggle the gear so get our little landing legs. Um, and then this terminal descent basically what this tries to do is control, basically get my vertical speed to between um, five, and then as I get closer to the ground, lower it to neg uh, one meter per second. As I get even closer, lower it to 0.1, and then when I'm basically just above the ground, shut off the engines, so break out of this loop, lock throttle to zero. Okay, so let me reload the um, this, and we'll try out this slight modification. Okay, so what I'm basically using here is something that's, um, oops, um, uh, in robotics or control theory, which is called a PID controller. Now, I'm only using the P part of it, proportional. So, the idea is that I want a certain quantity to be within a certain value, okay? Uh, and that could be my speed or my heading or something. And it, for whatever reason, could be a little bit off from that value. So if it's off, I need to make a correction. So the proportional controller part, what that does is it adds a correction factor that's proportional to how far off you are from what you want it to be. So a good example of this would be if you're driving. And let's say that you start to drift very slowly into the next lane. Well, you would correct by making a pretty gentle turn on the wheel to steer yourself back into the correct lane. Whereas if you were in the wrong lane to begin with, you'd have to make a more drastic correction in order to get back into the, your desired lane. So the amount that you use to correct needs to depend on how much, how far off you are. Now the I and the D part take into account some calculus. Basically the D part is how fast is the error changing? And the integral part is, do I have lots of error that's accumulating? And I want all of those things to go to zero. Um, so for this, I didn't program in the I or the D parts, and that's why my code is not particularly elegant. So let's run this and see what happens. Okay, so again, it's computing. We need to start the landing burn at this point, and whenever this number and our actual altitude are uh, essentially the same is when we need to start the burn. And we slow down because uh, thick air, basically. Okay, so we start our burn.
And again, it would have worked except we had a little bit too much horizontal um, motion. So when I tested this yesterday, it worked great. So I need to add some code basically to kill the, um, the horizontal part of the motion. Okay, so uh, let me pause and see if we've got any questions. Uh, questions, ideas, thoughts. Uh, would there be a way to make this an automated system so you wouldn't have any user errors? What do you mean by user error? Uh, well, really, it could be the timings off. Like, yeah, you could try starting when it says so, but you could be a tad bit late, and that might mess up the landing. Yeah, so this is... Open up the code here. Oops. Uh, well, we're crashed, so we can't do it. Um, okay. So if I let me edit. Okay, so there's not really user error because it is pre-programmed. Um, basically, this would work perfectly, okay, assuming two things. One, that the ship mass is constant and two, that the engine's thrust is also constant. So if I were to teleport this rocket over the moon um, in this game and turn on one of the cheats that allows for infinite propellant, basically that means that you don't actually burn the fuel that you have, it just magically works, then... Um, this computation would put us down at uh, the instant we touch the ground, our velocity would be zero. It would be perfect, okay? Um, and what I would have to add to it is basically, well, I have to do more complicated physics, right? Physics is why we cannot have uh, nice things. So uh, to take into account, of course, that the ship's mass decreases and the ship's thrust also changes um, and so what I was trying to do here when we start the burn is <clears throat> um, you'll notice that this computation is the same um, as the previous one and basically what I was trying to do was say okay if we are higher than the current height that we need to that we would have needed to start the burn then we are starting the burn too soon. Or another way to say it is we should decrease our throttle from 100% down to, you know, some lesser amount. Um, and if that's the case, decrease the throttle. And then um, I guess we could decrease this to 100. Let's try that. Um, uh, right, so that's, that's what I'm trying to do. And then what I'm doing here is I'm printing the difference between the height we should start a burn on versus where we are currently. And if that number, that difference is big, then that means I should have waited or I need to turn down the throttle a little bit. The other thing is that you'll notice I've got this constant in front called KP, and I've set it to 0.1. Oh, there it is. Um, if I change that constant, it will change how quickly 
or how basically how stiff the steering is how stiff the control of the throttle is so let me try let's save this and let's run it Would there be a way to rotate the engines to get rid of horizontal motion when you're landing? Yes, there is. Um, and uh, I would just need to put in some code to do that. So only the center engine is capable of rotating. But I do also have, let me pause while I explain this, I do have two other ways to steer this thing. So this module at the top is basically a gyroscope. And... Uh, then these little blocks that are on the side are reaction control systems. So um, reaction control is basically, you probably saw this on the SpaceX thing. There were little jets of what looked like steam puffing out uh, at various places. And that's basically just nitrogen gas or something. Um, but if you puff a little bit of air out this top, here going say to the right then that's going to put a force on the rocket that makes it rotate a little bit so between those three things the reaction control system uh, the gyroscope and being able to to gimbal the lower uh, sorry the center engine then yeah I could do that so let me resume this too much so okay well so let me let me close this let me resume the oops let me load the save and I'll show you what sort of a, what a finished product could look like okay so we've got another mod in here called mechjeb Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just say land somewhere. Okay, now I have not turned on my autopilot landing. I'm running this one. Okay, so that would be a uh, better, you know, better descent. And I just realized that one of the reasons that we blew up is I needed to basically move the landing legs down slightly because the rocket's engines are, the nozzles are touching the ground. So that's part of why we were exploding. But anyway, so this mod that uh, basically I just ran here was called MechJab and essentially if I had sat around for a month and really really carefully programmed all of these sorts of things um, then I would have this um, I could have a lot of the stuff in this mod so for example last night what I was doing was writing an ascent guidance program mine's not as nearly as elaborate as this one um, 
but uh, yeah so that's we'll have to kind of wrap up here uh, shortly um, that's kind of a quick crash course if you'll pardon the pun in how to or not to land an orbital class rocket and on the subject of that let's uh, let's look at something fun just kind of the end um, so if we go to YouTube let's look at SpaceX as a blooper reel so essentially this is what we were doing was um, SpaceX, one of the things that's nice about them is they're not afraid to have something fail and they learn very quickly from failure. So they tried many times to land their first stage booster. Rapid unscheduled disassembly. Whoops. So that's what it's supposed to look like. Um, oh well. All right. Well, um, let me go ahead and paste the link in for the unfortunate essay part of this. Um, so let me get into. Let's get this out of my email. So you guys have about. Um, half an hour or so um, to let me find the link here it is copy link all right so I'm going to paste this into the discord window and I'll also put it on twitch um, oops okay and let's get this on twitch also in case you're there Okay, so if you go to this link, I'll just show you what it looks like. This is what you'll see. So just put in your name, your email address that you've been using with admissions, uh, high school, all of that sort of stuff. Uh, and then you want to pick the um, me, Professor McKinney, where am I? Here, Programming and Autopilot and Kerbal Space Program, and then today's Friday. Um, what I'd recommend is you write this in Word or Notepad or something and then just paste it in. 
Um, yeah, so take about 20, 30 minutes to do that. Um, these things don't need to be long, and they're not obviously going to be super well developed because you've only got 20, 30 minutes. Um, when I got a couple questions last night about how long this stuff should be, obviously it's not going to be super long because it's just time. Um, but normally when we do this on campus, guys are handwriting it, and they usually end up being one to two handwritten pages. So uh, obviously if you're typing it, it'll go, uh, you know, how much fits on a page is different than if you're handwriting. But yeah, so not, not super long. Um, great. Any questions or final stuff before we quit the, quit the Twitch stream? Uh, do we need to rejoin back to the main Zoom or? Uh, I don't believe so. Um, let me just double check on that. No, you do not need to join back to the main Zoom. Um, yeah, that that's it for programming after you guys submit your your essay. Um, if you have problems with it um, not submitting or anything like that and it comes to that you can always email it to me um, I'll type my email here it's there on the screen oh no it's not on the screen there it's on the screen now okay so just yeah mechanic at wabash.edu um, but you should just be able to hit submit and it'll work fine um, if it doesn't then uh, just talk send it to me or uh, send it to your admissions person and then they can get it to the right spot. All right, so I'll go ahead and kill the stream and just hang out on Discord um, for the rest of the, the time in case you guys have questions or whatever. And when you've submitted your essay, you're free to disconnect and go about the rest of your day if some of you guys are at school right now. Um, and... Um, yeah, and you're of course welcome to hang out on the Discord server basically until you come to Wabash, right? So, all right, I'll kill the stream here. Thanks for coming, and I'll see you guys on Discord. <laughs>